So good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to the Prague conference called Technology Assessment and the Policy Areas of Great Transitions. Uh, first of all, let me excuse the director of the Technology Center of the Academy of Sciences, uh, who, who's uh, actually uh, ill and cannot uh, welcome you here on behalf of the Technology Center. And my name is Lenka Hebakova, and I am the project manager for the PASITA project uh, here in the Technology Center. And that's why I would like to kindly welcome you here in Prague in the National Technical Library and on the conference itself. Uh, that's on behalf of the organizers, which is not only the Technology Center of the Academy of Sciences, but also the Karlsruhe Institute of Technology in Germany. Uh, we organized this jointly, and this event is held also under the auspices of the Ministry of Education, Yath and Sports of the Czech Republic, so we thank for that. This institution is the main one responsible for research and innovation issues in, in the Czech Republic, so that's an important partner to talk about technology assessment in, in our country, definitely. Uh, this conference is organized in the framework of the PASITA project uh, as the first one of the two conferences, uh, and the second one is planned also by the end of the project in Berlin. PASITA is a four years project, uh, a European one financed by the Seventh Framework Program. And the acronym of PASITA stands for Parliaments and Civil Society in Technology Assessment. There are 15 European partners in the project from national as well as regional parliamentary offices for science and technology also from science academies, research institutions, universities, and civil society organizations. The project is coordinated by the Danish Board of Technology. The technology assessment, uh, in its simplest definition, is evaluation of new technologies. More importantly, technology assessment is based on the principle that technological progress can never be free of social and ethical implications. Technology assessment has therefore been driven by two impulses. One impulse drives towards expert analysis and the other towards the public debate. Resulting TA is a combination of these two principles. There are several types and modes of technology assessment. Uh, the one primarily uh, reflected in the PASITA project is the parliamentary technology assessment. Parliaments are natural addressees of TA activities as they have technological, so social uh, and technical issues on the agenda. Particularly uh, when a piece of legislation for new technologies and scientific discoveries applications is being formed and approved the social impacts and ethical aspects shall be considered as well. Parliamentary technology assessment activities uh, may be performed directly by members of parliaments, such as in France or Finland, or they can be do done on behalf uh, by related TA institutions, such as in the UK or uh, Germany or by organizations not directly linked to the parliament, such as in the Netherlands or Switzerland. Uh, with, within the integration of Europe, the science and technology issues become European and global. The three main dis discussion areas of the conference uh, will therefore focus mainly on the following topics. Firstly, the need for cross-European TA is obvious when large technological infrastructure as well as issues of regulation of new technologies go across national borders. The first experiences with cross-European TA studies have to be further de developed. New methods and new modes of cross-national 
cooperation are needed. Secondly, at the same time, cross-European studies uh, must involve those countries that so far did not have a functional TA infrastructure. Further development of cross-European TA uh, has been combined with initiating the establishing of TA structures in the new member states, including the Czech Republic, preferably in some kind of cooperation with the parliaments. At this moment, I wish to say that, that our Technology Center of the Academy of Sciences of the Czech Republic, based on its activities and experiences, is ready to be considered for this role. Broad discussion of TA methods uh, suitable for topics of great transitions such as energy mix, aging society, ICT for society, and some others are the third category of the topics discussed on the conference. The discussion will be involved when uh, we will involve, sorry, will involve policymakers, researchers, TA practitioners, experts from NGOs, media industry students, and other, others. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you will have a interesting conference days, uh, full of inspiration of our next work. And despite the demanding program, including more than 100 speakers from all around Europe, from Asia, America, and Australia, we also hope that you will have some time to explore our beautiful capital of Prague. So thank you for your attention. And I am now passing the floor to the chair of this opening session, which is Lars Cleaver, who is the coordinator of the PASITA project, as well as the director of the Danish Board of Technology. So Lars, the floor is yours. Thank you, Nina. Well, I'm a, I'm a kind of a, a guy who likes to stand up when I talk, so I will do that. Uh, welcome. And uh, I'm looking forward to have uh, three days together with you, exploring the, our um, a main interest and an important thing in our societies, technology assessment, parliamentary technology assessment, methods, uh, subjects, topics that are important for transition of our societies in times of big change. So uh, that will be very exciting. My name is Lars Kluver, as Lenka said. I'm the director of the, of the Danish Board of Technology. You can start this presentation now, Viva, if you want. And, um, and I'm also the coordinator together with uh, Anna Jacobi. Where are you, Anna? Up there, uh, of the Pasita uh, project. And I will just give you a brief introduction to this project because uh, there will be many hints to this project during these three days. I think it's important that you know what it's about. Um, as Lenka said, it's called Parli Parliaments and Civil Society in Technology Assessment. Um, there are some overall aims of there. Are, it's, it's a big project. It's a huge project, actually. There are some overall aims that goes for all activities in it, which is that we want to contribute to increasing the European capacity on parliamentary TA, or maybe as we begin to talk about policy-oriented TA. We want to, in, want to in, in, enhance the institution foundation for, in a broader sense, knowledge-based policy making, which means that we also want to embrace other kinds of activities and talk with other kinds of activities who do things which are TA-like. Uh, the project builds on the uh, diversity in Europe. Uh, as Linka said, a TA is, uh, is made very differently across Europe and very differently uh, institutionalized. And the modes of, uh, of working in TA are very different. You know that, many of you, and we will discuss that much during the three days, I guess. The key practices are those that are interactive, which are those that invite society to take part in some sort, stakeholders, experts, so in tech, tech part in the, uh, in the uh, technology assessment activity. And last but not least, we want also to take a European perspective and develop and test modes for transnational and European TA. And I will just briefly exp explain what that's about. These, these, don't read that. 
I mean, it's just uh, something I have to do, it's something you always do, you have to present the partners. But basically, there are eight partners who are existing parliamentary TA organizations, and then there are seven partners who are, can I say, wannabes without anyone being uh, looking strange in the face. So, uh, seven partners in countries where it is being discussed, or will be discussed, or have been discussed to establish TA in a more formal sense. Um, this is the PACITA action plan. Uh, there are three uh, large introductory activities we call them documenting TA, debating TA, and training TA, which leads to learning and creating capacity, of course, to open access to results and practice so we, everybody can see what, how, what TA is and how it works. And the de debating TA is kind of mobilizing actors, parliaments, institutions, and so on. And when we've done that, we go to three cross-European example projects. One is expert-based, one is stakeholder involvement, and one is citizen consultation. And all, about it is, all of it is about public engagement in research, ethics in research, to mobilize and to learn mutually around TA in Europe. I'll just go briefly through the, these different packages of work. The documenting TA part is, uh, is, uh, has a big job, which already has been done, which is to make an overview of existing parliamentary TA institutions. Uh, the report can be downloaded, and uh, you've seen a lot of these kind of reports and books. This one is uh, quite interesting because it makes totally new uh, kind of analysis of the different institutionalizations of parliamentary TA in Europe. I think it's really worth reading for those of you who have followed the institutionalization of TA. Uh, and then we had a work package on uh, our task on potential work modes for cross European TA. And finally, there will be a TA book which sums up the whole project. Training TA, there are two summer schools for users and actors on TA. We have had one in 2012, and there will be one in 2014. We have four trainers, training seminars for practitioners. One will be very soon, in uh, April, and there are still seats open if anyone knows something, someone who could be interested. It's about methodology. There's one on scoping and framing issues, one on methodology, one on, on networking and creating impact of TA, and one about communicating TA. And then there's the TA portal, which I think for many of you is a very interesting thing. We try to gather a TA in a, in a TA web mining portal, which is kind of content repository for TA activities in Europe and abroad. Uh, so we try to develop a one-way entrance to TA, actually, on the web. Debating TA is about expanding the TA landscape. That's where the seven uh, countries who do not have parliamentary TA yet make national uh, discussions, a debate about if they want to establish parliamentary TA in their countries. We have two parliamentary debates. We have two European TA conferences. Welcome for the first one. And then we had eight issues of the magazine Volta, which if you're not subscribing to it yet, then you should. So it's the first European magazine on technology assessment. We have three uh, cross-European uh, projects, and all of them are coordinated on a European level but have national uh, activities. So it's kind of multi-site principle behind these projects. There's one with based on experts uh, and uh, members of parliaments working together in a, what we call a future panel. It's on public health genomics. Then we have one about stakeholder involvement, scenario workshop methodologies on aiding society in telecare. And last, we have a citizen consultation, uh, multi-site citizen consultation on sustainable consumption. The project has been financed by the Science and Society uh, project. There was, was, they developed a, a work mode which is called the Mutual, the Mobilization and Mutual Learning Action Plans. Was it right in Indonesia? <laughs> which are, are big projects with all of them with the aim of connecting actors in Europe, Europe ar around a common issue uh, and developing uh, different action plans to strengthen the issue. And we got this project in the first round of, um, of MM Labs, which we are very grateful for. The proposal for this project was made by EPTA, which many of you also know about. It's the European Parliamentary Technology Assessment Network, of which there are, if I remember right, 13 members across Europe 
and abroad. Um, so what are we going to do the next three days? Well, at least I will invite you to discuss approaches, methods of TA, and we do that with the aim of improving them. I think we're trying to look forward, we're trying to look into the role of TA in the future, uh, in transition, for example, which all of the societies go through. And therefore, we lo we're looking into the future. So we're looking at improving TA, looking ahead. Uh, oh, that was a strange way. We want to explore the role and use of TA with the aim of increasing it. So uh, how can TA uh, uh, be broadened out? How can the landscape be broadened out? How can the use of the things that already go on be broadened out? We want to look into the landscape of TA with the aim of expanding it. We want to present experience and topical work. There will be a lot of, of that done in the workshops during the next days with the aim of learning. So uh, then finally, we want to be serious, but we also want to have fun. So we want to make serious fun here. So please enjoy each other, build bridges, uh, learn to know each other. We are three days together and we can get a lot out, out of that if we want. So let's have serious fun and memorable moments. Let's do that. So welcome all of you. And then I go into another role. Because uh, we have three uh, uh, welcoming uh, presentations here. And the first one will be given by Ivan Wilhelm, Professor Wilhelm Eken, who has... I have a little paper here, so I will tell you who he is, because he won't say himself, I guess. Uh, I will do that. So, uh, Ivan, you're the government commissioner for, for European research in the Czech Republic, which means that you coordinate the participation of the Czech Republic in the European research area and in the framework programs of the EU and the European Atomic Energy com uh, Community. And you're appointed by the government. Uh, so, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Distinguished colleagues, uh, ladies and gentlemen, dear guests, uh, I have uh, prepared my homework here. And I think that uh, it is the simplest way to read it uh, because it will be, in most uh, part, it will be save your time, which is dedicated to the topic of your conference. <clears throat> but first of all, I would like to express my gratitude to the organizers for the invitation to address you here on this opening session of your conference and uh, to convey the apology of the Ministry of Education, which is now today is uh, in abroad and has no uh, possibility to be with us. But he asked me to wish you in his, on his behalf, uh, the best course and the conclusions of your conference. Uh, with respect to your conference, which is titled uh, Technology Assessment and Policy Areas of Great Transition, and uh, which is the part of the European Project Parliament and Civil Society in Technology Assessment, we are speaking about the project which we are moving into the relation of the new technology and society. All we belong to the eyewitnesses of the rapid development of new technologies and techniques, and all we believe that it means to have a positive influence to our life. The main goal of the project PASITA is the, to contribute to form a general meaning about the application of new technologies and R&D results and uh, to assess somehow the feedback of, the, of such employment. With respect to the effort to present maximally unbiased opinion, it is necessary to evaluate the positive as well as negative impacts of this process. It means to spread the public enlightenment and widely, as widely as possible. The role of new technologies for the public sector and for the decision making of these responsible bodies is growing in parallel with the simplified manipulation with them and with the wide availability of them. 
As an example, I remember well the beginning period of the IT applications for communication and for the decisions making processes. One of the main argumentation in that time, it was the saving of the human resources and by this fact to demonstrate a high efficiency and lower operating costs. It was too, too important, probably. <laughs> so, well, uh, one of the main argumentation at that time was the saving of the human resources and uh, to make lower operating costs. It is quite clear now that the main argument advantaging the application of the modern IT is the chance to shift the decision making to a new, high qualitative level. There existed more pragmatic and practical reasons to introduce the new IT as a necessity for the communication and standard work in the scientific and research area. Research and science being the international phenomenon cannot exist in isolated environment and the application of new technologies for research and communication of researchers mean quite natural aspect. I guess that the right way to minimize the risk and maximize the intensity of the application of new technologies is to intensify the education in, of the people in such wide platform as possible. I mean that the real application of new technologies must be a type of cultural to be introduced into the content of standard study programs on some level in the secondary education and on quite wide platform in the tertiary level education. It must uh, become to be the matter of intensive dialogue of the administration, the public services with high education representatives and Ministry of Education. Ladies and gentlemen, a lot of you arrived to Prague to take part in this conference from abroad. It is a sign that you consider the matter of the PASITA project and this conference to be successful. I would like to wish you to have an interesting meeting with valuable contributions and fruitful discussions, informal as well as in informal debates. Moreover, please, do not forget that life is not only Pasita project. <laughs> and Prague is not only the National Technical Library. Prague is a magic town with a lot of legends and mysteries, and we believe that this environment brings inspiration and new ideas itself. Mostly over a glass of Czech beer or Moravian wine. I would like to wish you to have the successful conference and to spend nice time in Prague. Thank you. Thank you, Ivan. I promise to take a Czech beer and a glass of wine. Uh, the next speaker will be uh, Anna Putnova. Uh, Anna Putnova is, uh, is chair of the Committee of Science, Education, Culture, Youth and Sports at the Chamber of Deputies in the, Czech, uh, in the Parliament of the Czech Republic. And Anna has already been involved in the PASITA project because you've been interviewed by, with regards to establishing TA in, in, in the Czech Republic. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, dear colleagues and guests, thank you for inviting me to the conference. For three days, we will be dealing with serious issues faced by the present economy and society that we expect scientists to help resolve. Because I am here as a member of the uh, parliament, member of the lower house of the parliament of the Czech Republic, I would like to inform you on the activities that the house and myself personally undertake towards sharing information on innovations and science. About a month ago, an act was amended requiring regular reports on and transport conditions for work on grant projects. 
We are currently monitoring work on a new university act and conditions of financing science and research. I pledge myself to hold two to three such meetings annually to tackle competitiveness. Last year, several such meetings did take place, and I am glad that they were attended by both science and representatives from the business sphere. Increasing the share of private funding resources is one of the big challenges we are going to face in the years to come. Science, research, and innovation have risen to prominence in international cooperation. Global trends and international nature of scientific cooperation are essential to resolving the challenging questions that future has in store for us. For instance, what will be the role of science in industrial policies of governments? How important will science be for setting international standards of the environment, ethics, quality, and so on? Or how can it help supervise adherence to such standards? It is gratifying to see that already during the university studies, students can test international cooperation. I am speaking about the EU Erasmus Exchange Program that has existed for 25 years. Enhancing Europe's human potential and its competitiveness is a goal shared also by your program. You may be interested that uh, 1.5% of the Czech student population participate in mobi uh, mobility abroad. No quota for women stands a chance for outcoming students here because 61% of them are girls. Which countries are the most attractive for the Czech students? Germany, France, Spain, United Kingdom, and Portugal. There were about 5,200 uh, incoming Erasmus students in the Czech Republic. We have become the most favored destination for Spanish, French, and Polish students. This is a resource for further international cooperation, also in science. PESITA connects major scientific topics with social and political life. I see it as one of the roles of social innovations that are necessary for applying the outcomes of science. Ladies and gentlemen, conferences and scientific seminars have come to take on the role of religious pilgrimages in the past. They bring together people from different cultures with different scientific specialties and objectives. This should result in clarifying further research methods, verifying the current findings, mutual inspiration, and encouragement. I hope that uh, you are successful in achieving this goal and enjoy your stay in Prague. Good luck, Pasita. Thank you, Anna, and thank you for reminding us of the importance of the youth and the students. And uh, actually, we have the last day a session called TA Meets Young Talents. So we, we have had it in our minds when we planned this conference. Thank you. I know you're going to leave us, so uh, you have to excuse Anna. She has obligations otherwise. Uh, the next speaker is uh, Martin Svoboda, your director here and at, at the National Technical Library. 
and you will tell us a little about the uh, the library and uh, the venue here, or floor is yours. Oh. Uh, well, I believe my role now is just to welcome you here. Uh, well, if you if you would like to, then uh, I'm uh, I'm uh, glad and I'm ready to talk about one hour about the library. But I'm afraid <laughs> it wouldn't fit in your program. So, uh, dear ladies and gentlemen, the esteemed guests, it's my pleasure to welcome you uh, your conference in the National Technical Library or National Library of Science and Technology. Uh, in the library that is crowded with technologies uh, that were carefully chosen to help uh, to create a pleasant and productive environment for the study of next generation of technologists and scientists. But the library also strives to complement the, uh, the Davidson campus of technical schools uh, by a social dimension and also a conference center that you are now enjoying, I hope. Uh, well, I will not talk to your topic. Uh, just let me cite uh, Richard Meyer, who used to say, to forecast is difficult, and in particular if it comes to the future. So I wish your conference uh, a pleasant and productive pilgrimage days, not only in NTK, but also in Prague. Welcome.